Welcome to Honest News. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. In the name of the Lord, though Satan rages, we cannot be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. How serious a matter is not believing the truth? How serious is this matter? When God's people do not receive the truth, Serious, very serious. In fact, more serious than we probably think it is. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for your mercy. We know that you only chasten those you love. You only chasten your people. We know, Lord, that the world is without chastisement, and they are bastards. They are not your people. They are not your children. They are not your people. I pray, Lord, your people will understand the seriousness. They will understand the gravity, Lord, of what's being said. Ask you to bless and anoint, Lord, this message as we minister your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. In this context, Jesus was speaking to the Jews. <clears throat> let's, let's look at the context. Jesus says, you do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. And and Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father, the devil. The lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not.
the context of this message. Jesus is speaking to those that he has categorized as children of the devil. And he said this because they did not believe him. And because they would not receive the truth. I understand that Jesus is dealing with the Jews, those that didn't believe in him and those that did not receive his words. But equally, how much more serious is the matter? Notice Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. Who's he speaking to? Is he speaking to the world? Is he speaking to the Jews? Who's he speaking to here? He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Notice of how much sore punishment. Suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. God speaking to his people, not speaking to the world. He's speaking to his people. Amen? For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again the Lord shall, what? The Lord shall, what? Judge his people. Interesting. So, what happened to once saved, always saved? The Lord shall judge his people. Oh, well, I thought when I believed on Jesus and I thought when I got saved, I thought I got a free ticket. I thought it was just free and clear that I didn't have to do anything. Yeah, a lot of people think that. But just because you accepted Jesus into your heart, just because you believed on the Lord Jesus does not give you a ticket that's free and clear with no strings attached and, and no conditions to meet. Listen to me. Even though you may have been saved, that just gets you into the race. That's just a ticket to get you into the race, people. You can be disqualified before you get to the finish line. You can actually fail and not finish your course and not finish the race. There's no guarantee that you're going to finish the race. There's no guarantee that you're not going to fail. We've got to stop this idea that when I got saved, I got a free ticket to heaven. Salvation is a gift, but I don't read anywhere 
that says it's free. Nowhere. It's not free. It cost him everything. And if you're going to receive all he has for you, it's going to cost you everything. It's a gift, but it's not free in the sense there's nothing you've got to do on your part. Amen. What's this idea today I'm hearing? It's faith alone. Grace alone. Devil's very clever, isn't he? He'll either get people to only focus on works without faith, or he'll get them to focus on something that's not even faith without works. What he does not want you to do is have faith and works. James said, you show me your faith and I'll show you my faith by my works. Faith without works is dead. If you will not judge yourself worthy of eternal life, by applying the truth, by obeying the truth, then the Lord will judge his people. His people. Judgment begins in the house of the Lord. Notice what it says. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Not speaking to the world. He's not speaking to the unbelievers. He's speaking to his people. Amen. So this is what really you need to understand. How much more, how much more sore, how much sore punishment, punishment. Too much is given, much is required. How much Sore punishment. Suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God. What is that talking about? You can be saved and begin for just rejecting the truth. Did you know that? Did you know you can be saved born again and reject the truth and end up in hell? Did you know that? Just because you got, look, I want you to understand something. Salvation is not a guarantee. There's nothing guaranteed about salvation. I mean, know that. There's no guarantee. Unless you meet the requirements Oh, well, I didn't know. I, I just thought it was all free grace. No, you got to meet the requirements. What are those requirements? You must obey the Lord. Obedience. You must be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. Well, I thought I, thought I was just going to get in because, you know, I'm saved. Look, people. It's one thing to be saved initially when you first get saved, but you have got to stay saved. And the only way you're going to stay saved is by doing, by being a doer of the word. Are you listening? He's speaking to those that were sanctified, not just saved, but these are they that have been sanctified. Amen. God chastens those he loves. If God is chastening you, scrutinizing you, you ought to thank God he is because he's not doing that to the world. He says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. The word rebuke means to find fault. Amen. You know, you're watching these, some of you all watching these hearing, these um, 
impeachment hearings that are going on. And you're seeing some folks being grilled. Nothing comparing to being grilled by Jesus Christ, by the truth. Nothing's going to slide by, people. Nothing. Nothing's going to get by him. If you think you're going to slip something by Jesus, it's not going to happen. Amen. It's not going to happen. Nothing is going to slip by those eyes that run to and fro. His eyes see everything. Are you listening? He doesn't miss a thing. Nothing is going to enter his kingdom that he doesn't approve. So get that notion right out of your mind. There's people today that literally believe they're going to heaven and they're going to split hell wide open. Now, remember what Jesus said to those that thought that they were ready, that thought they were righteous. He called them children of the devil. And he says, because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. You think Brother Joseph's going to stop telling you the truth? You think I'm going to compromise with everybody else? Well, I'm not going to. As my pastor said, I want to go to heaven. Amen. You're not going to enter his kingdom if you don't bear witness to the truth. If your life does not line up with truth, we must be purified. Are you listening? We must be made white. We must be tried. We must be purified. There can't be any lie in us. No shadows. Are you listening? What they call uh, white lies. There's no such thing as a white lie. Dishonesty is dishonesty. And it will not be tolerated, will not be accepted by God. Will not. It's not going to happen. God's no respecter of persons. You just look at Moses. He, not, he did not enter into the promised land. Look at David. Right? Look at David with Bathsheba. Had a man killed to cover up his sin. Did God just let him get away with that? And the list goes on and on and on. You want to thank God if he is grilling you, thank him. Thank him that he cares. Amen? As many as I love. Isn't that what he says? Isn't that what his word is to the Laodicean church? As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Speaking to his people. He's speaking to the lukewarm church of this hour. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Rebuke means to find fault. Chastening is to punish, to correct, to get us to admit, to confess the truth. We see a little bit of that with Joseph and his brothers. He was trying to get the truth out of them, where it wasn't really Joseph, it was God working through Joseph. Amen. The world today, they hook up to themselves to lie detectors, and they'll be grilled by dishonest people. But have you ever been grilled by the truth? Have you ever been grilled by the Lord himself? Nothing gets by him. They even say you can beat the lie detector. Oh, yeah, but you, you, you're you not going to get anything by him. Uh-uh. Nothing's going to get by him. And you ought to thank God for that. 
somebody that cares. Thank God for a minister. Thank God for a minister that won't let anything get by. Amen. They used to say of my pastor, they used to say, it's like he's looking right through me. That's the Holy Ghost, people. That's not my pastor. That's those eyes. He was filled with the Holy Ghost, and that's those eyes of the Lord. Flames of fire. Like flames of fire. When he looked upon Peter, Peter went out and wept bitterly. Amen? Praise the Lord. Glory to the Lamb, people. Do you want to be categorized with those Jesus said, you children of the devil? You want to be categorized with those that the Lord says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord? You want to be categorized with those that are going to receive sore punishment? Much more sore punishment. Or will you allow him to chasten you so that you might not be condemned with the world? Are you listening? Do you want to be condemned with the world? Because that's what's going to happen. You'll be condemned with the world if he does not deliver you. Amen. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We need to accept and thank God for his chastening. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because if the Lord does not help us, we will be condemned with the world. And he's talking to his people. Don't believe this lie, once saved, always saved. Don't buy into this cheap grace, this lasciviousness. Don't do it. If you're not a doer of the word, you're cheating your own self. power in the name of Jesus we've got thank you for your support of honest news network in the name of the 